Hello, and welcome to Virginia Time Travel, your portal to the Commonwealth's past, present, and future. The topic that has always seemingly captured the imaginations of so many people is one that has recently been found in Hollywood and in many different avenues of entertainment, and that is Pirates. Pirates of the Caribbean is probably one of the top grossing films that you'll find in the entire movie uh, genre today. And many people always want to go ahead and become a pirate. They like the swashbuckling aspects of it. And they just think this is so great and wonderful. And of course, if you mention the word pirate to any child, the first thing they'll do is, "Ar matey. They always seem to do it. But what is behind that whole arg? Is there more? What is the big deal with pirates? Why are people so fascinated by them? Well, I think part of the reason is this whole idea of this life of action and adventure where your brains and your nerve and your luck, you can go very fast, very far. I mean, you could start with nothing and in a couple of years be walking with kings. Every man was potentially a sovereign prince. And you have the adventure of taking ships, of storming castles, of burying treasure. And, you know, frankly, I think a lot of people are intrigued by this whole notion of buried treasure on mist-covered islands or windswept beaches. Well, certainly there is always that intrigue and the whole drama and aspect of it, but certainly there's also the danger. I mean, certainly there are those who are adventurous and are danger seekers, and the life of piracy is certainly for them. But I think that's something that's oftentimes forgotten about. It's always this idea of danger. But I think what probably really does appeal the most to the people is just they get to live out this adventure of a lifetime for them. And certainly nowadays, the idea of seeing pirates is so few and far between that uh, the imagination just kind of puts you in that fantasy. And so I think it's the idea to live at, like these pirates, these larger than life characters living out a fantasy that we can only dream about. Well, when you say that, it's not really true because there have always been pirates. I mean, back in ancient times, the times of the Romans and the Greeks, there were pirates in the Mediterranean. And even today, there are pirates off the coast of Somali, for example. The United States Navy is chasing pirates that are going after cruise ships. So there have always been pirates. But you're right, when most people talk about pirates, they're really thinking about basically two groups. Either the Elizabethan sea dogs like Sir Francis Drake, or they're thinking about the golden age of piracy from 1650 to 1750 which is your Blackbeard, your Captain Kidd's, uh, your Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, and then there are even some later pirates in our own history. Everybody knows about Jean Lafitte helping Andy Jackson defeat the British at New Orleans in 1812. And even as late as the 1820s in Florida, the pirate Gasparilla. There's a Gasparilla Day in Tampa every year now where people celebrate being pirates. And there are pirate festivals all over the United States where people dress up as pirates and live the life. Well, certainly a man like Jean Lafitte is one that uh, doesn't necessarily get looked at. I mean, he was certainly a pirate along with his brother and the Louisiana coastline, very important. And uh, his timely arrival in uh, January of 1815 at the Bow of New Orleans uh, certainly helped sway the American cause. But, you know, I guess we always have that. stand corrected. Of course. <laughs> but, you know, one of the things that does come up, of course, is we have this image of the pirate. We have, uh, for those who enjoy the classic films, we have the Errol Flynn pirate from The Sea, Do the sea Hawk, um, where he plays Captain Thorpe. We have present-day Johnny Depp playing Captain Jack Sparrow. And so we have these preconceived notion ideas, and people will close their eyes and they'll just picture this pirate. But who really were the pirates? I mean, who were these men that we seemingly have now idolized? Well, you take Sir Francis Drake, for example. I mean, <clears throat> Sir Francis Drake, with 73 men, decided he was going to take on the entire Spanish Empire. And the Spanish Empire had conquered the Aztecs and the Incas and come into possession of just mountains, literally mountains of gold. When the Spanish conquered Peru, for example, they took the Inca emperor hostage and they made him fill up an entire room from floor to ceiling with gold as his ransom, and another room full of silver. Um, 
at the mines of Potosi, a 2,000 foot mound of pure silver. For hundreds of years, the gold and silver of the New World went to Spain. And here you have this rogue, Sir Francis Drake, this nobody with 73 men, decides he's going to sail to the New World and hijack one of the silver trains as it's loading up one of the uh, treasure fleets. Um, he did it successfully. He decides he's going to come back and cross over to the Pacific. No Englishman before had ever done that. This was totally monopolized by Spain. He goes around the tip of South America, goes up the undefended side of uh, South America, Peru, loots these Spanish cities, ships, sails all the way up to San Francisco, leaves a plaque there claiming it as New Albion. Then he sails across the Pacific Ocean, captures a huge Spanish treasure ship in Spanish Philippines in Manila, completes the first circumnavigation of the globe by an Englishman, sails up the Thames in this ship that's low in the water because it's got so much treasure on board, jewels and gold and you name it. He gives the queen her share of the gold, which accounts for several years of national taxation. So she's absolutely delighted. She knights him, Sir Francis Drake. He becomes a pillar of the establishment and goes on to be one of the key admirals in defeating the Spanish Armada in 1588. I mean, this is a larger-than-life character. You couldn't invent a guy like this in the movies. Well, certainly, you know, s truth is sometimes stranger than fiction, but, you know, that's just one man. I mean, we're talking about a single person who was able to rise up through history, but, you know, for your common man pirate, he makes his name during the piracy. And certainly the background of these men is always a rather unique one. They, they become pirates virtually through inadvertent means. Uh, wars amongst European nations, you have privateers. And basically they are told by a le legitimate European government that you must hunt down and capture, destroy, or anything you can, an enemy ship of ours, and this is your profit. I mean, don't you think this would have certainly been an influence for a number of people to become pirates? Oh, yeah, I don't think there's any question. By the time you get to the great age of piracy in the 1650s, you've got three or four imperial European powers controlling all these islands in the Caribbean, the French, the Spanish, the English, the Dutch, and they're all using private ships because they don't have big national navies to do their bidding. And so they're warring on one another and capturing one another's islands, capturing one another's ships, and the line between patriotism and piracy gets pretty thin. Well, certainly uh, that is true. In fact, a number of merchants, uh, depending on the company that you're involved with, if they lost one or two ships, they would never really complain too much. But if you continuously harass their own uh, merchant fleet, eventually you would be declared a pirate. And so there was certainly that. And always, of course, uh, the fine line between war and peace is always there. You might be a pirate uh, to one nation during a peacetime, but then at war you're automatically a privateer and could become a national hero. And this certainly does play a rather daring effect. 